Okay, so here is the second video on tissues. Um, this one is going to go over connective tissue, um, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. Again, you guys have really been requesting a lot of um, videos on the tissues, so I finally gave in, and I guess I'm officially now accepting requests. Um, so the last video was on epithelial tissue. Now we'll go through the rest of the types of tissue. Okay, sorry, I have like a delay with my computer. So connective tissue, just kind of comparing it to epithelial tissue. It has a fewer or a lower degree of cellularity. So that means fewer cells. So with connective tissue, you might see like a cell here and then a bunch of like protein and then a cell here and then a bunch of protein and then a cell here. The cells are scattered. Epithelial tissue, the cells are bam, 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 right next to each other. Okay, so scattered cells, fewer cells in connective tissue. They're not normally touching each other. Okay, they're spread out. And they have a lot of extracellular matrix. Extracellular means outside of the cell. So there's a lot of junk outside of the cells. There's not in epithelial tissue. Connective tissue, yes, there's a lot of stuff outside the cells. When we look at that extracellular matrix, it's got two major components. It's got protein fibers and then ground substance. Protein fibers are things like collagen, elastic fibers to provide elasticity, um, keratin, uh, reticular fibers, just proteins for substructure and strength. Um, and then the ground substance is just kind of like the fluid or jello type stuff that's all outside. Okay, in bone, it's hard like concrete. In the blood, it's liquidy, it's fluid. In collagen, it's more jello like. Okay, but just the, the kind of fluid substance that's outside of the cells, that's the ground substance. Um, when we look at connective tissue, it's innervated. Okay, just like epithelial tissue, you got nerves, you can feel stuff. You can send commands to the tissue, you can get sensory information out of the tissue. It is also vascular. Okay, that is a big difference um, between connective tissue and epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue was avascular, no vessels. Connective tissue is vascular. There are blood vessels going through the tissue. It has a direct blood supply. Um, cartilage is the only weird one there. Um, cartilage does not have blood vessels going through the center of it, but it has a super thick vascular layer on the outside called the perichondrium. Um, so while the vessels aren't in the tissue, they're very closely associated with the tissue. Now we've got all different types of connective tissue. Okay, we had all different types of epithelial. We'll have all different types of connective tissue. And we are going to name them or kind of differentiate them based on the types of ground substance, okay, and the types of proteins and the density of those proteins. Okay, so how many proteins? Do they have reticular fibers or do they have collagen? Do they have collagen and elastin or just collagen? Um, that's how we're going to kind of tell the difference between them. This is just showing you the different classes of connective tissue. Um, I'm, I don't test on this in general, um, but in kind of showing you the, how we get from the mesenchyme in the embryo to the different types of cells, they give us the different types of tissue. Okay, so like the fibrocytes give us our normal connective tissues, um, like loose connective tissues and dense connective tissues. Chondro means cartilage, so chondrocytes give us cartilage. We're gonna look at three different types of cartilage. Osteo means bone, so the osteocyte gives us our osseous tissue or our bone tissue. Um, and then the blood cells, we've got all different types of cells present uh, in our blood, but that comes from the hematopoietic cells. Or hematopoiesis means blood production. Okay, so we'll start out with the loose connective tissues. We say that they're loose because there's a loose arrangement of proteins. The proteins are not like super densely packed in there. They're kind of like thrown about. So they're loose connective tissues. Um, when we're looking at the pictures of them, you'll know that they're looser because you'll see these open spaces. See like this white, these white kind of random white areas? That's where there used to be ground substance. There used to be like fluid or gel in there, but when you prepare the slide, it evaporates out. So all you're left with are cells and protein fibers. Okay, so if you see more of these kind of open spots like this, that's showing you it's more of a loose tissue. Um, and then you see cells. So these really dark areas are showing you the cells that are scattered throughout the tissue. 
and then these lines are showing you proteins. So these lines, nice straight, these nice straight, um, really dense dark lines are showing you elastic fibers, and these thicker um, kind of light pink fibers are showing you collagen. Okay, so the collagen is always going to be more of a pinkish color. The elastic fibers are darker. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a brief introduction to a loose connective tissue. Let's look at the specific types. So this is areolar tissue. Okay, it's the same picture we were just looking at. That picture is of areolar tissue. So areolar tissue. Um, we have a loose arrangement of fibers. Right? And the fibers that we see are collagen and elastic fibers. Okay, so if you see collagen fibers and elastic fibers thrown loosely about, that's areolar tissue. Okay, um, I would like you to know that these cells are fibroblasts. I would like you to know that these light pink thick lines are collagen and these dark thin lines are elastin or elastic fibers. Um, we see this underneath the skin. Um, we see this kind of forming sheets between muscles and membranes. It's a connective tissue, so it binds other epithelial tissues, it binds other types of tissues together. Um, again, areolar connective tissue. So it's loose, right? You see the, the white open areas where the ground substance has dissipated or evaporated. You see the fibroblasts or the cells scattered throughout. All of these light pink areas are showing you collagen. These darker straight lines are showing you elastin or elastic fibers. Again, areolar connective tissue. So reticular connective tissue is another loose connective tissue. Um, reticular connective tissue is found in the lymphatic system. So we find it in lymph nodes. Um, we also find it like the thymus where your T cells mature. We see a lot of open little areas where the ground substance disappeared. Um, we see a lot of reticulocytes. Your cells are reticulocytes and sometimes you'll see lymphocytes, white blood cells in there too. And then you see reticular fibers. So reticular fibers are really dark, like elastic fibers were, but they're more kind of craggly and bendy. Like that to me looks kind of like a cherry tree. But you know like an old tree gets kind of gnarled and bent up in weird ways? That's how the reticular fibers are. The elastic fibers are more straight and thin. Okay, so this is reticular connective tissue. These, this is also reticular connective tissue. Okay, so you see all this kind of open area, right? And then these craggly looking dark lines are showing you the reticular fibers. Right? And then all these cells are the reticulocytes, the reticular cells. Again, kind of like a cherry tree, an old cherry tree, that's reticular tissue. In the lymph nodes, the lymphatic system, the thymus, spleen. The last loose connective tissue that we'll look at is adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is fat. Okay, this is just your lipid tissue, your fat tissue. Um, the cells are called adipocytes. Okay, again, ocyte means cell. So adipocytes and adipose cell. When we look at them, they're essentially a big, what we call um, lipid vacuole. That's just like a fat vacuole, a big sack where we just store fats. Um, so this is the one that I was saying looks kind of like the, the apical view of the simple squamous epithelial tissue because you just see like a bunch of tiles together, right? You see a bunch of like cells kind of interconnected like this, but you don't see a nucleus in the middle. Okay, that's how you can tell the difference. There's no nucleus in the center for the adipose tissue. Um, we find it in our subcutaneous layer beneath our skin. That's why when you store a lot of fat, your body shape changes, right? Because you store more adipose tissue um, in the breasts, the buttocks, and, and really anywhere all throughout the body. This is where we store lipids. So this is showing us adipose tissue. Again, it looks like just these kind of tiles, right? It looks like cells all up against each other, but notice there's not a central nucleus. That's because the, the fat vacuole, the storage um, like sac for fat actually pushes the nucleus off to the side. So this whole thing is taken up with fat and the nucleus gets like squashed. It gets squished over in the center of the cell. 
If this were simple squamous epithelial tissue, you wouldn't see a nucleus in the middle. Okay, so that's how you tell the difference between the two. This is adipose tissue. Then we'll look at a couple types of dense connective tissue. So when we look at dense connective tissue, we see that it's really dense. Right? Instead of a loose arrangement of protein fibers, they're really, really densely packed together. We'll see that we have dense regular and dense irregular connective tissue. So this is dense regular connective tissue. It's dense with collagen, very, very densely packed collagen. And it's regular. The collagen fibers are organized beautifully. They're all kind of going in the same direction. That's dense, regular connective tissue. We find it in like tendons and ligaments because um, they have very predictable lines of stress. You know which way you're gonna pull on that tendon. So you orient the collagen fibers all along that predictable um, direction of stress. So this is dense, regular connective tissue. Here you see the cells. Right, the nucleus, the cell, nucleus, the cell. Okay, and then surrounding them, you have these nice straight lines of collagen. Okay, the collagen is packed everywhere. Notice you don't see like these white spots where the ground substance disappeared. There was very little ground substance. This tissue is essentially pure collagen. Tons and tons of collagen. All this light paint that you see is collagen. These are the cells scattered throughout it. Okay, and again, the collagen is very organized, so it's regular. Dense, regular connective tissue. Dense, irregular connective tissue is still dense. It's got a ton of collagen, but the collagen's really unorganized. Okay, the collagen is not in a regular line. It's all swervy and going in all different directions. Uh, no, it's an expanse. Um, the collagen is going in all different directions. So we find dense, irregular connective tissue in deeper parts of the skin, down in the dermis, underneath the epithelial tissue. Um, and then we find it um, kind of in like, uh, like capsules that surround some organs and surround our bones and stuff like that. This provides strength because it has such dense, dense collagen fibers, um, but it provides strength from all different directions. And tendons, we know what way we're gonna pull on it. So the collagen all goes in that way. But your skin, right, you can yank and twist and pull in all different directions. So you need the collagen to be going every which way because you never know which direction you're going to stress it from. So this is showing us dense, irregular connective tissue. These are the cells. Okay, so the fibroblasts, you see, again, the cells are kind of scattered throughout the tissue. And you see tons of collagen. All of this pink that you see right here is showing you collagen. Lots and lots of it, but it's weird, right? It's not all nice and organized in a row. The collagen curves in all different ways, okay? This is dense, irregular connective tissue. And often it's much more dense than this. This is kind of a crappy picture in the lab manual because the collagen should be super, super dense. You should see tons of pink everywhere like this. This is a good, dense, irregular connective tissue. Look at all this like curved collagen, all these curly pink fibers curling in every direction. Really, really dense. There's more collagen than anything. Okay, that is dense, irregular connective tissue. All right, so now we'll take a few minutes to look at the different types of cartilage. And my battery's about to die, so hopefully we get through these. I apologize if this cuts off right on me. Um, we'll look at three different types of cartilage. The way that I identify cartilage is that the cells, okay, cells of chondrocytes, those are the cells, they're trapped in a lacuna. Lacuna is the Hawaiian word for little lake. So you'll see a cell and it's living in this little bubble. It's got like a little circle around it. That tells you it's cartilage. Then we just have to figure out what type of cartilage it is. Um, we'll look at hyaline cartilage, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage. So this is hyaline cartilage, okay? Again, looking at this, look. So this is the cell membrane, right? There's its nucleus. And then look at this circle around it. That's the lacuna, that's its little hole. And you can obviously see these big bubbles around the cells. Okay, that tells me I'm looking at cartilage. Now all I have to do is figure out what kind of cartilage is this? Hyaline cartilage 
has this really nice glossy matrix. Okay? It has collagen, but you can't see it. You can't see it because of all of these, like, um, there are a bunch of crystals present in this, so you can't see the collagen. So it's got this nice, smooth, glossy matrix. Okay? You don't see fibers in it. That's how you know you're looking at hyaline cartilage. Um, this is the cartilage that covers the ends of your bones. So where you have these nice smooth caps on the ends of your bones so they can slide and glide nicely, that's hyaline cartilage. Um, this is another example. This is from your lab manual of hyaline cartilage. Again, when you look at this, like you can see, it's, it's harder to see the lacuna, but you can see this like extra shadow around the cell. Right, so here's my nucleus, there's my cell membrane, and then you see this extra shadow around it. Okay, so again, you have like this, this lacuna, you have this extra like circles around your cell. That's telling me I'm looking at cartilage. Okay, then I say, what fibers do I see? None. I don't see any fibers in the matrix, right? It looks nice and clear and glossy. So that's hyaline cartilage. Elastic cartilage is not clear and glossy. Elastic cartilage is highly elastic and elastic fibers are dark and dense. So the super dark looking cartilage is elastic. Um, elastic cartilage, again, you see the cells in their lacuna, right? So like there's a nucleus, there's a cell, and then it has this clear, obvious circle around it. These really big, obvious bubbles. That tells me it's cartilage. And then look up here, look how incredibly dark this matrix is. There's tons of these dense, dark elastic fibers. That's elastic um, cartilage. It forms your outer ear. Okay, so like when people get their cartilage spears up here on the top of their ear, that's elastic cartilage there. Um, these are showing you other examples of elastic cartilage. Again, you can see this nice, clear, obvious lacuna around the outside of the cells, and then you see that it's dark, right? Any of this darkness outside is elastic fibers. Same thing here, nucleus, cell, lacuna, okay? And this is dark. Darkness is showing you that's elastic cartilage. Fibrous cartilage is the last kind of cartilage. Um, fibrous cartilage, you see fibers, it's just that you see collagen fibers, okay? So you see the cell in the lacuna, so that's cartilage. It's not glossy, that would have been hyaline. It's not dark, that would have been elastic. It's pink, okay? Pink fibers because that's cartilage. That tells us, or sorry, that's collagen. That tells us it's fibrous cartilage. Um, <clears throat> also, we'll typically see these kind of well organized, like you might see like little pairs or rows of the chondrocytes organized pretty nicely um, for the fibrous cartilage. These form discs. So the intervertebral, like your discs that you have that provide padding between your vertebrae um, and your knee for where your uh, femur meets your tibia like this, you've got two cartilage pads, the medial meniscus and lateral meniscus. Those are fibrous cartilage. They provide nice padding in areas where you've got a lot of weight and pressure going down. This is fibrous cartilage. Again, you see these very well-defined circles around the cells. That tells me I'm looking at cartilage, right? So here's my cell, look at this perfect little bubble. Okay, that's cartilage. It's pink, right? The really pink kind of wavy one, these fibers are collagen. Okay, so this is fibrous cartilage or fibro cartilage. Again, I said it's organized too. Notice how you've got like these little like rows or these perfect little pairs um, of cells. That's also something that tells me it's fibrous. Okay, so kind of purpley, pinkish, glossy is hyaline. Dark, dark is elastic. Pink, nice, organized, wavy lines. Um, that's showing me fibrous cartilage. Okay, so we'll take a second to look at bone and blood, our last types of connective tissue. Bone looks like a tree trunk, right? It looks like, you know how when you cut a tree trunk, how you see the, the rings? They go out and that tells you how many years old or whatever the tree is. That's what this looks like. You've got this dark, um, it's called a Harvergian canal or a central canal in the middle. Um, that's where a blood vessel is gonna come up the center of this, this osteon or this area. And then you'll see osteocytes, bone cells, go around in a circle. And then they've got this dense matrix. 
Again, bone cells go around in an upper circle, and then a bunch of dense, dense, hard, strong matrix. Bone cells go around in a circle, dense, dense, hard, hard matrix. Okay, but it looks like a tree trunk radiating out, right? And then there's like another one here. Radiates out with these circumferential layers. Okay, another one here. Radiates out with these circumferential layers. That's bone. We have a couple different types of bone. Um, we've got spongy bone and compact bone. You probably will not go over this in your lab. You'll go over it when you do the skeletal system. Um, but essentially, compact bone is compact, right? It's like this, where you've got dense bone tissue everywhere. Spongy bone is spongy. Just like a sponge, you've got open spaces. So you'll have like rods of bone tissue and an open area in between them. But you'll talk about that in the skeletal system. Finally, blood is the last kind of connective tissue. It's a highly specialized type of connective tissue because the matrix, the stuff outside the cell is fluid, pure fluid. It's mostly water, like 92% water. So what you see is a bunch of cells um, just suspended in fluid, in liquid. So each of these little red tiny dots that you see like this, those are red blood cells. They're red blood cells that transport the oxygen and the CO2 through your blood. Every once in a while, you'll see a bigger cell like that. That's a white blood cell. Okay, they defend your body against infection and disease. Um, they're bigger, and you can see a stained nucleus in them. Okay, you'll see this like darker stained nucleus. This is another white blood cell. Platelets are itty bitty. I don't know if you can even see it on the video. It's like a dot. Okay, it's way smaller than all of these red blood cells. An itty bitty little dot is a platelet. Those are for blood clotting. Okay, so this is blood. All these red dots that you see, right? There's tons and tons and tons of them. Those are red blood cells. Way more of them than anything else. If you see a tiny speck, that's a platelet. These bigger cells are white blood cells. Uh, 5% battery. Okay, again, you see the big ones are white blood cells, the smaller red ones are red blood cells, the tiny dots are platelets. The last thing, um, we've got muscle tissue. So we actually have three, so we did epithelial tissue, we did connective tissue, now we have muscle tissue and nervous tissue. Um, looking at muscle tissue, we actually have three types of muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and fluid muscle. I'm gonna try and get through it. Um, skeletal muscle is huge muscle cells. This is all one cell. One cell can be inches and inches and inches long. It's really big. You see that they're striated. Striated means striped. So see these vertical stripes up and down? Okay, and then they're multinucleate. So one cell has numerous dark nuclei. That tells me skeletal muscle. You see this really long area with these really obvious vertical stripes. I'm looking at skeletal muscle. Cardiac muscle um, also has vertical stripes. So it's also striated. Like when you look at this one here, they're kind of harder to see, but you can still see like this is not a printing error. It gives dark white, dark white, dark white, dark white, dark white. But they're not huge cells. They're smaller cells and they're branched. Um, they have like these branched ends on them. Well, they'll, they'll kind of go like this at the ends. Um, and then like that. And then they have a central nucleus. Um, a way that to kind of identify this is you'll see these, these like sharp vertical lines every once in a while like that. These are called interpolated discs. They're little connectors between the cells, but that's kind of an obvious way to tell you that you're looking at cardiac muscle. Okay, it's striped or striated, but it's not huge long cells. That's skeletal muscle. They're smaller cells with a central nucleus, and every once in a while you see this very obvious vertical line, the interpolated disc. That tells me I'm looking at cardiac muscle from the heart. This is smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is found in like um, lining your GI tract, uh, lining your blood vessels, lining parts of your respiratory tract. Um, this is kind of a hard one to identify, but you have these like spindle shaped cells with the central nucleus. Okay, it's smooth, so it's not striated. But these long spindly cells with the central nucleus. Um, this can be hard, you can confuse this with dense regular connective tissue. 
or dense irregular connective tissue. But with those, you see a nucleus inside, collagen outside. Okay, when we look at the smooth muscle, the nucleus is inside the cell, right? So you see like a nucleus with just the cell around it. Otherwise you see the cell and then pink collagen outside. There's not collagen outside. This is all cells that you're seeing. The pink that you're seeing is all cells for smooth muscle. Okay, the last thing we're gonna look at guys is nervous tissue. So nervous tissue is kind of easy to identify. The cells, the neurons look like stars. It's the only thing that looks like this. So you'll see these big kind of like branched star shaped cells. Those are neurons. Okay, and then you'll also see other cells. All these itty bitty dots are neuroglia. Neuroglia means neural glue. They're supportive cells that hold the nervous system together. Okay, so this is nervous tissue with these big stars. Okay, those are neurons. The tiny dots are neuroglia. I'm sorry, I know that this connected tissue um, and nervous tissue and muscular tissue was super, super fast, but I wanted to try and get through it before uh, my battery ran out. So hopefully that's helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and if there's anything in particular that you wanna know about, comment and let me know. Um, I'm kind of getting up to date with my materials so I can start doing random videos on stuff that you guys are interested in. Okay.